Hello, I'm Ren, and today we're going to look at creating drag and drop operations inside Unreal Engine using the UMG editor. So I've got a couple of aims here. We're going to create a slot and a payload, and that's kind of how the uh, drag and drop operations work. And that'll allow us to use the on drag and on drop events. And then we're going to spawn an object into the world if you drop that object outside of one of those slots. So the idea is that when you click on a payload or an item and you drag it, a drag drop operation starts, which is the on drag, and you detect that. And then you can drop it into a slot which has an on drop event. So whilst the on drag, or the drag operation rather, is running, on drop events will be able to fire uh, wherever you implement the on drop event. So we'll implement that inside what's called a slot, or what we'll call a slot. And if you don't drop it into a slot, you can basically delay for a second and then fire a ray, because you can't fire a ray whilst you're drag and dropping. So at the bottom there is just let's talk about raycasting and line traces. So let's jump in and do that. What I've done is create a new folder drag and drop. And I've imported a sheet of items. This one has um, this slot background sort of like uh, window. So we'll use that as the slot. And then um, we'll use this red vial here as the item that we're going to drag between them. So straight away we'll start creating the widgets for that. So the first widget I'm going to create is the actual um, slot that we drop into. So I'll just call this uh, umg underscore slot. So that's what we're going to drag this red object into and it's going to look like that little window. So I'll actually set that up right now. So instead of filling the screen we'll go to custom and rather than sort of type talking about everything uh, that we've already covered I'll just talk about new things that I come across. So this is going to be 200 by 200 in size and inside here I'm going to create a border which is going to fill the area. So that's that border, and then I'm going to set that brush to um, that slot background. So there it is. Right, so the this is essentially just going to hold um, the item. And the next thing we want to do is actually create that item. So we'll create another blueprint uh, widget, and we'll call this uh, umg underscore item. So inside here, We'll do the same thing, custom, we'll set it to 200 by 200. And once we've done that, we can zoom in now. And we essentially want a couple of things in here to uh, to show that item. So we'll drag an image in. I'll set that to uh, the full size of the screen. And what you'll notice when I select that red vial is that it's a little bit stretched. So one thing we can do here is um, wrap it with a scale box. So Wrapping is essentially makes this thing that we've got right clicked, so an image for now, uh, a child of one of these type of components. So I could wrap it with a vertical box, I could wrap it with an overlay, which means I could add other things on top of it. Uh, but for now we're going to use a scale box. What that does is you can see here it actually scales it um, uniformly. And you can change the settings of that scale box on the right hand side. Uh, scale to fit, you can change all those sorts of settings in the details panel as usual. So I'm actually uh, going to cut this scale box and delete this canvas panel and change it into a size box. And that size box allows us to dictate minimum, maximum and overrides for the size. So I'll just uh, override them for now so they'll definitely be 200 by 200. Uh, I know this is a sort of like a feature of doing drag drop operations. When you drag them they spawn in with no uh, desired size. So what I've done there is basically made that size box, which means that it's always going to uh, be specifically 200 by 200. Now in the parent of both of these, you need to make them both visible so the drag drop operation can actually work. So that main parent needs to be visible. So I'll do that on both and compile both of those. The next thing we want to do is actually begin those uh, drag operations. So I'll also actually change that scale box so it has a bit of padding because uh, this has its own little padding in the window so we'll do that there and the padding basically just means that it uh, scales away from the edges of whatever is inside so in the graph now what I'm going to do is just move to a clean area and start sort of coding these new things so first thing we want to do is override so inside functions on the left hand side you'll see this override and basically down here somewhere is a uh, on mouse button down so if we click that, it overrides the mouse button down event for this actual widget being pressed. 
as opposed to uh, this image here having a, one of these on mouse button down bounds or a button or something like that as an event it's actually using the widget itself like the main actor widget and it's overriding the function within it and there's loads of different ones that you can override anyway so we're doing this on mouse button down and um, what we essentially want to do here is detect if a drag is being uh, executed or if drag is happening whilst uh, you're pressing on this so what you can do is type detect drag on the mouse event uh, pin so the return value for that mouse event and you drag that into detective press and you drag these across and you connect all these return values up and all we need to do now is, to, is tell it which key we're detecting a drag whilst it's pressed so it's going to be the left mouse button for now and I believe this can also be like touch so touch one or anything like that so detect if this is being uh, dragged basically and if it is then uh, we can start doing uh, on drag things so now we can go into functions override and go to drag detected so because this uh, is detecting a drag if that mouse button is being pressed uh, whilst this object is being dragged this will actually fire this on drag detected so now we've got those two functions being overridden and on drag detected is the second one so that's the second function and basically in this one what we can do is uh, we can create a new widget which is going to be the the visual for the drag we can hide the current widget so that uh, as you drag something out of a slot it goes invisible where it was because it still exists there and you're creating a new one essentially with a drag operation then we'll create a drag operation and use those that new widget and the existing widget as the payload and the visual and then we'll um, we'll just finish the loop so the first thing we want to do is actually create a new um, widget so we'll do that and we'll call this umg underscore item so it's going to be a new version of this uh, same uh, object so it will be this little vial again and the second thing we want to do is set the visibility of the current um, widget so don't give it a target just use self so we want to set this to be hidden so as this drag is detected it hides the current one spawns this new one and then we want to create the drag drop operation which uses these things so I could actually drag off this drag operation uh, or you can just type it into the viewport drag operation and it create one for you and the idea is that the um, the widget that we create is actually the visual and the payload is the um, the one that you dragged from so this object where the drag is detected is the payload it is the thing that we're going to be moving between slots or dropping into the world so that's the payload and the drag visual is the new uh, widget that we've created here so we'll make sure all of these are connected and then all we need to do is make sure that the return node for this uh, drag being detected uh, the operation here it wants an operation so we drag that operation in and um, and that's it for that so you've got this um, pivot thing here you can change where it's pivoted from so if it's center center it will drag like this if it's uh, something like top left it will be dragging like this and so on so you've got to think about how you want that visual to look so I'll compile and save that and the next thing we need to do is actually set up the drop event so that will be on the UMG slot itself inside its graph and again what we do is we um, override the on drop and you'll see that it has the operation here so whilst the drag operation is running in the background uh, based off a drag being detected on an item that has that implemented like this one where we've implemented it so back on the uh, red vial we've implemented the on mouse button down to check for drags we've detected the drag because we're letting the left mouse button um, detect those so that's been detected it's created that new drag drop operation and back in the slot which is this we create the on drop so that's just two things that you have to do set up the item and set up the slot that you're dropping onto and you can access this operation now so what we essentially want to do is uh, get the payload <coughs> is get the payload of this operation so that's the payload that's the actual item but what we might want to do is actually cast it to um, the umg underscore item so we know we're definitely getting a reference to the right thing and then we could essentially remove that original payload um, from the parent so we'll remove uh, from parent uh, off of that cast you can't do it off the payload because it doesn't know exactly what the payload is the payload could be a variety of things so that's why we cast and then we can actually remove that from the parent that's a tag it has to be a widget so 
this UMG item is a widget and that's why we've cast it. So we remove it from the parent, that's the first thing we want to do. And then we will also want to set the um, visibility of the original item back to true. So if I set visibility to true here, this just says um, if I drop it into another slot make it visible again because we made it invisible as we started dragging it. So I'll just double check that just here. We set the visibility to hidden. So as we drop it, we want to make it visible again. And then we want to add it to uh, this um, this slot. So this border here needs to be a variable so that we can actually add a child to it. So I'll call this border underscore slot. And inside here I'll be able to access that now on the left hand side because it's a variable. So drag that in. And then if I drag off the return value and type add child, it means I can add new content as a child of this uh, of that specific part of my designer. So that could be any part. That could be a vertical box. It could be a horizontal box, or uh, or an overlay panel, or something like that. And we can add child to any of those sorts of things as long as it's a type of panel. And in the details, you'll see panel has a load of different things that we can add children to. So anyway, we're adding it to the uh, border for now. And then uh, the content wants to be the original content there. So that's pretty much everything. We just need to tick that value there now and actually draw these uh, to the screen. So we've got a little note here that says uh, there's no return value for the cast failed. We could drag that in. Um, we don't really need to worry about it too much to be honest because we know we're only dragging and dropping this specific item because that's the only one we've coded on. So the last thing we need to do is um, open the level that we made previously, uh, go to the blueprints and set up the uh, slots actually drawing onto the screen. So I'll do that now. So I've got these two uh, drawing to the screen now. So I'm just using the code from the last video that went over alignment, anchors, position, size, and all sorts. And I'm just drawing these two to the screen instead. So I've got those two slots now. And the next thing that I'm going to want to do is actually add a child to one of them. So I'll pick the left hand one, and I believe this is the left hand one. So what I need to do is off of the um, return value of the UMG slot is get that border slot again and add a child to it. And the child content wants to be a um, item, wants to be the UMG item, the red vial, but we can't actually select it from here because it doesn't exist. So what we need to do is create another widget uh, similar to how we've done in some of the other classes UMG item and actually drag that in like that. So now when I press play one of them starts with that and then you can actually drag these around and you'll notice if I just drop it, it doesn't know what to do with itself so it just disappears because the uh, essentially the event has cancelled and we don't want to do anything anymore because we haven't told it what to do. So back in the item what we can do in the event graph is right click and type on cancelled and event on drag cancelled so if a drag has been detected which we can detect through here. If it gets cancelled, i.e. you just let go and you're not over a slot, what you can do is you can actually maybe set the visibility of the original one back to true again. So I could get the payload, which was the original widget where it was, and maybe set its uh, visibility back to true. But you might have to cast it to the item to be able to do that. So if I cast that over like that, and then set its visibility back to true. If I do this now and cancel it, it just uh, snaps back to wherever it was. So I could put it over here and then drop it and it sets the payload which is still existing over there but it's invisible. So it sets it back to true. So what I might want to do is have uh, something in the world uh, which lets me actually drop this down on it um, or spawn something new. So instead of um, doing this, it's just an example of one of the things you can do. Instead of doing this bit here, what I'll actually do is uh, delay for just a second, like 0.2, maybe even 0.1, and uh, and then do some line tracing. So we said we'd go over line tracers, and what this is basically going to do is ask if there is a hit under the cursor, and if there is, I'm going to spawn an object there and uh, destroy the original payload. So what we will actually need to do is keep this here. Instead of setting the visibility, what we want to do um, well, we need to check two things first. So we can do that and we can maybe promote this to um, a variable called current payload. So what I've done here is uh, made this a variable so I can access it later on. 
and that's when we're going to decide whether to uh, set it to visible or not um, based on whether we're hitting something so what we'll do after we've set that variable is just delay for sort of like 0.1 of a second uh, like we were saying and then we'll do a line trace so a line trace is a, um, a query basically a question of is there anything um, from one location to another in a line like is there going to be something intersecting with a line as I trace from a start to an end point so you have to dictate what those are and then you can trace on different channels you can ignore certain actors and you can also do different types of traces so let's talk about traces for a second we've got uh, if I just type in trace you'll see all the types that we can do uh, here so all inside this collision drop down right I've got sphere traces and that um, basically projects uh, sphere after sphere after sphere of a certain radius across um, in a direction similar to the start and end but it does uh, spheres as well so that can uh, check in a radius uh, you can do multi-sphere which basically means it will hit the first thing and then it will carry on and try and hit the next thing and the next thing so you can trace through objects as well as hitting each one on the way and getting the information for each of those so for example if I did um, uh, multi sphere trace by channel you see out hits it basically means it's hitting every single object on the way through that trace so I'll type trace again and we'll just talk about a few of the other ones uh, you've got multi capsule so again that's just a shaped version multi box uh, and then you've got box capsule line uh, and you've got the two options you've got channel or objects so if I did um, a line trace for objects instead I can dictate which kind of object types I want to trace for and we've seen before uh, inside settings project settings not plugins inside settings uh, project settings inside uh, collision we can set up our own object channels here and then we can use those inside actors and tell actors to be uh, of a certain object type so um, just to quickly show that I think in UMG basic yeah we made a note creator and in that sphere down in um, in the collision presets you'll see that object type is well dynamic so if I now go back to uh, my item and look at this, I can pick World Dynamic from this list. And if I go back to the settings again and I set up a new one, so maybe I set up uh, my new OBG channel, and it's always set to block. Uh, if I go into my UMG item, I can probably pick that from here. Um, if I just make one again, because it needs to load it. My new object channel. So if something was using that new channel, it would only ever hit those objects. So that's quite a useful uh, way of tracing. So you can trace for objects, uh, and you can have an array here, so you can add a pin to this, and you can trace for also pawns, you can trace also for uh, vehicles, for example. So I'll just delete those. We're going to use a single, uh, simple line trace, because we just want to get the uh, hit information from the endpoint. And to get that endpoint, what we're going to use is the mouse so the mouse is always accessible from the player controller so if I just type get player controller and then what we're going to do is essentially uh, get the um, world location uh, from the mouse location so what I can do is mouse world and it converts the mouse location to world space and what that gives us is uh, the location where the mouse was and the direction in which it's facing based on the camera so that will give us a line trace from wherever we're uh, clicking to wherever it looks like it is in the world in a way so it's going to project it in the right way um, so what we do is we start at the world location because it's going to convert the mouse location to essentially like wherever the camera screen is so like the front of the camera so it's going to use that and then we're also going to need an endpoint which uses this world direction so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply that direction because it's just a unit vector it's 0 to 1 so I'm going to multiply this by 5000 to give it some length and then I'm going to add it to the location where it started. So it starts at a certain location and ends in whatever that start location was, add the direction uh, and the distance that we've dictated in that multiplier. So we just need to add uh, two vectors together, so vector add vector. So we'll add these, we'll make that the end point. And then the next thing we can do is in this return value we could branch and we could say if we hit something then um, remove the payload um, from its parent so the payload no longer exists if we don't hit anything we could set the visibility um, back to true and this um, 
this question could also use um, the hit result. So if you drag off of that out hit and break it, this actor here, we could cast this to different types of actors, right? So we could have um, a droppable actor and a non-droppable actor, and we could ask if um, instead of this branch and this condition here, we could say, you know, if is it this one? Yes. Okay, we'll let it drop. Is it uh, the non-droppable? Yes. Okay, well, don't drop. Uh, or is it the droppable? No. Uh, just just don't drop it and, and set its visibility back to true. And don't do what I want it to do. So you could you could change the logic here. Uh, but for now, we're just going to uh, ask if there's a hit, and if there is, uh, we're going to remove it from the parent. And if there isn't, we're going to set it back to visible. So that's all we'll do for now. Uh, and that should work pretty well. And the reason we have to delay is because while a drag drop operation is on, um, the mouse isn't um, relaying a position um, for some reason. Like it's a bit weird. So um, it's something to do with the fact that um, the UMG is on the screen being controlled and the mouse can uh, convert to world space and stuff like that. So we've got this little delay in here just to, just to bypass that. It's a bit of a workaround. But if we go back to our level now and hit play. And I drag this and drop it, it gets destroyed. But if I move my uh, player and make it so that we don't get a hit, for example, if we shoot out into the world, it will go back again because there's no there's no hit anymore. So I can drop it there instead. So now the last thing to do is um, I've shown how that sort of works, and you could do that condition uh, differently. But the last thing I want to do is actually spawn something there. And that thing could uh, have a trigger radius on it, for example, and attract things to it and stuff like that. But for now, what we'll do is we'll just actually spawn it. So if I go back to my item, uh, when there is a hit, remove the object from a parent, and then we want to spawn a new actor. So spawn actor uh, from class. So I'm just going to spawn like a cube, if I can, uh, or a box. Can I spawn any sorts of things? Okay, I'm going to have to make an actor. So what I'll do is uh, go back to my test level. Uh, go into my drag and drop and I need to make a new actor so what I'll do is I'll actually um, make a sprite from this uh, and we'll actually drop that into the world so if I uh, create a new blueprint actor call this red vial and inside this red vial I'm going to uh, add a sprite component and that sprite is going to be the uh, red vial that we've been using so there it is uh, I'm going to make that the parent I'm actually going to add a scene component so I can move that paper sprite and make sure that it's not clipping into the world. So it's going to spawn um, a little bit higher. You'll see it's snapping at the moment. So what I can do is turn off the grid up here on that little orange thing and just move it how I want. No, I might turn it back on. So we'll save that like that. Uh, and if I go into the test level again and just look in the direction that the player would be spawning and just drop that in. I'll notice that it's actually uh, sideways for me. So what I'll do is I'll just rotate this, look back again, and we'll see it's just there. So that's the object that I'm going to spawn from my item. So it's called Red Vial. And it wants a transform. That's basically the, um, the only information that spawning something needs. It needs to know where to spawn it. Uh, and it also knows some, it needs to know how to spawn it. So you could say, always spawn and ignore collisions. Um, and sometimes you might want to try and adjust the location uh, if it has a collision in the way um, or you could say try and adjust the location but if it's too far maybe don't spawn it uh, or just don't spawn at all if you're colliding so what I'll do is always spawn it and the spawn location is going to be the impact point of my ray trace when it became true and hit something uh, it's just going to spawn it there the rotation is going to be normal the scale is going to be normal again uh, and that basically should be it so I should be able to drag this down, drop it, and it plops down my little uh, red vial there. So just to go over the uh, Photoshop document, we uh, create a slot and a payload. So we've done that here. We've got this uh, slot, and inside this slot it has an on drop operation, and that's pretty much all it needs. We've also created a payload or an item. So that's uh, the UMG um, vial that we made it had a scale box and a size box on it so the scale box made sure that it didn't distort and the size box made sure that when we dragged it in the viewport that it was always 200 by 200 units and inside this item we had a few things we had uh, some overrides in the functions so on mouse button down we detect if the drag is pressed which allows on drag detected to run which is another override function 
So we click that little override thing there and pick it. Uh, we create a new widget, which is the default drag visual. We set the visibility of the one that's in the slot to invisible, so it looks like we're actually picking it up and moving it. And uh, we set the payload to itself. So the payload is um, the item that's sat inside the slot at the start of the game. And then we set up this drag drop operation and we return it. So that was the on drag and on drop events. And the next thing we did was in the uh, test level we drew both of the slots uh, where we wanted them, so specific locations on the screen. And then on one of the slots we also created a new widget, got the border slot from the uh, the slot item that we made, the UMG slot, and we added the new widget item to that so that we spawn with an item in there. And then those on drag, on drop events all fire. And then the last thing that we did was um, had a look at ray casting and line traces and spawning an object into the world. So if I go back to that now, um, we'll see it here in the event graph. Uh, if a drag gets cancelled, get the payload, uh, we save a reference to it in this example uh, so that we can use it over here later on, payload new, remove it, or set the visibility to true based on uh, this condition. We delayed for a second after we set that payload up. Um, and then we used the player's mouse position in world space to get a decent line trace into wherever we're actually clicking or dropping specifically. Um, and then we did this branch in this condition, basically just saying, did something get hit or not? And we can see that um, if we go up here and drop it, there's no hit. So uh, this gets called, this set visibility gets called. But when there is a hit, we actually spawn the object into the world wherever our mouse was. So that's pretty much everything covered for um, for that sort of stuff. Remember, you can uh, this condition here. This could be anything. Um, you could maybe cast this to um, a specific type of actor, like the red vial. We could we could cast this hit to a red vial, and say um, if this is true, uh, do that. If this is false, do that. So we could have that condition instead. Uh, we could have all sorts of conditions that run this last bit of code. You could also maybe um, check the display name of this actor. So we could get display name, ask if that is equal to um, a specific name and then drag that condition in. And it could be any sort of condition, but basically we've covered the three uh, main aims of this, so we've created slots of payloads, we've done drag drop events and we've also spawned objects into the world and looked at ray casting and line traces. So uh, thanks very much guys, uh, go and make some awesome drag drop UMG, um, do some really cool stuff with that, uh, I'd love to see it so just post it down in the comments and um, if you've got any questions let me know and uh, yeah YouTube's on my phone so the comments will come straight through and I can reply to them pretty quickly, uh, teaching is what I do now so I'd love to help you out. Uh, have fun. See you later.